Hello Year 12 and welcome to the first video here for our ninth topic. We're doing networks. Now this is a very new topic, um, so there's a whole lot of new language, terminology, even ideas that we've got to pick up as we go along. Now I'm just going to mostly pick it up as we go along. I'm going to talk about vertices and edges first in terms of our network. Vertices is going to be represented as a dot on a graph and edges as a line joining them together. Now you might think of this as being like a model representing a road network with dots being towns, right? Our vertices being towns and edges being the roads between them. Now, if I don't have a road that goes directly between these those two towns, right? I'd have to make a detour by somewhere else. And that's the same with our uh, with our network that I can only get from one vertex to another by following a series of edges. Now these edges will normally connect two different vertices, although it's not impossible that it could loop around and join uh, both edges, both ends of my edge could possibly be joined to the same vertex, right? In that case we call that a loop. So here in our first example there's a question. I have a, a uh, network graph here and how many vertices are there and how many edges? So first of all, for A, let's write these things down. Make sure my pen's working properly. Okay, I like this one. Okay, how many vertices? Well, there are four. Oops. There are four vertices. Okay, A, B, C, D. And how many edges? Well, I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, and this is another one here, is a fifth. So I've got to say, and five edges. Okay, four vertices, five edges. Now, what's the degree of A? One way to understand this is, if I sort of draw a circle around here and, and cut everything, how many times, how many sort of edges do I cut? One, two, three, four, five. So it has a degree of five. Okay, so A has a degree of 5. The degree of a vertex is how many edges come out of there. So B has a degree of 2. C has a degree of 2. D has a degree of 1. But A there has a degree of 5. Moving on now, a directed network has arrows, means that you can only follow those edges in the direction of the arrow. And a weighted network has numbers along each edge. And um, we call that the weight of that edge. That might be like the length of the road or something. Now some more language here. A route. Imagine that I trace along my network somehow with my pen. As long as I don't take my pen off the page, right? As long as I continue along, it's called a walk, right? A walk uh, follows the edges of a network. If I end up where I started, it's called a closed walk. Now, if my walk doesn't go along the same edge twice, right, if I don't double up on any of the edges, that is called a trail. Okay, A trail doesn't repeat any edges. And if my trail takes me back to where I started from, then I have a circuit. Now, trails and circuits, they can use the same vertex a number of times, they just can't reuse the same edge. A, uh, a walk that doesn't repeat any vertices, right? And that means it can't repeat any edges either. Now, if I, if I have a walk that never goes to the same vertex twice, that's called a path. And if my path takes me back to where I started from, it's called a cycle. Uh, just very briefly, the idea of connected and not connected should be pretty obvious there from the diagram that networks that are not connected mean I have sort of elements, subgraphs, parts of it, and it's impossible to get from one part to the other by following an edge. Okay, uh, We're just about always going to talk about connected networks. Uh, we are now going to look at representing a network uh, with a table. So you can see here in example two, I have a four by four table. Right, rows and columns labelled A, B, C, D. And there are some zeros and ones. Sometimes instead of zeros, we have dashes. Right, doesn't matter. Now, in a weighted network, we will have um, other numbers other than one here. But this won't be a weighted network. Um, and so 
just one if there is an edge and zero if there is no edge between those vertices. So we're going to draw it like this. I'm going to start by drawing four vertices and we'll label them A, B, C, D. Where you have drawn these right, will mean that your graph might look different to mine, but topologically it will be the same, by which I mean the number of edges coming out, the degree of every vertex will remain the same. Uh, the connections from one vertex to the other will remain the same. Okay, At first glance, they may look different. Um, but in terms of our understanding of graphs, they will be the same. Now, from A to A, there is no edge. So there's no loop at A. From A to B, I have a 1 in my table. So that means there is an edge that goes from A to B. There is also an edge from A to C. But it doesn't say, it says there's no edge from A to D. Now from B to A, there is an edge, but we've already done that one. From B to B, it says there's a 1, so I must have a loop here at B. Okay, there's my loop, B to B. No th nothing from B to C, but there is from B to D. Okay, so I'll draw that edge in there. Now C, A, we've already covered, and there is an edge. Nothing from C, B. There's no loop at C, and C, D, there is an edge. So we'll draw this one in. Okay, that's C, D. And finally, D, A is already covered, D, B is covered, D, C is already done, uh, and there's no loop at D. So that is my graph finished off, complete. There are other ways to draw that, as I said at the beginning, that will look very similar. Oh, sorry, that may look quite different, but mean exactly the same thing. Don't worry too much. If you put your, uh, your vertices in a different arrangement to begin with. Now, let's look at example three, and I need to, or I want to, draw a table to represent this network. So we're going to do the reverse of what we did in example two. I need a table here. I can see that I have five vertices. So I need a five by five table. In fact, I'm going to use a stepped table here just to speed things up a little bit. So I'm going to say A, B, C, D, and E here. And across the bottom, A, B, C, D, and E. And now by the magic of video, and there we have one very scruffy looking stepped table. Now, what I've done by drawing my table like this is I have removed the double ups that occurred that we saw in the other table. Okay, because from A to B and B to A in an undirected network, right, a network that doesn't have arrows attached to the edges, right, A, B, B, A means the same thing, so I've just removed the duplicates. So let's start at A here. Now A, we can see A here has an edge going off to B and E and that's all. So A, so there's no loop at A. AB is 16, has a weight of 16. There's nothing at C. There's nothing at D. And AE is 27. Okay, that goes in there. Now, we'll have a look at B. There's no loop at B. B is connected to A, already covered, and C is 11. So 0, 11, 0, 0. Moving along to C, there's no loop at C. C is, we've already covered uh, B. So you can see I'm only interested in, in the loop at C, C, D, and C, E. So C, D is 8. C, E is 6. That's a 0. 8, 6. Now D here, we have no loop at D, but D, E is 14. And I do have a loop at E with a length of 3. And that's it. Okay, that's how we create a table from a network graph. Uh, and previously, we created a network graph from a table. And prior to that, okay, prior to that, we identified um, various elements of a graph. Vertices, edges, loops, the degree of a vertex. Okay, I hope so far this makes enough sense. If you've got any questions, jot them down. Ask me in class. See you then.